this group of people that Paul had written this letter to, uh, they was believers, Zach. Yeah. They was believers. And uh, they're rich beyond measure in Christ Jesus. Now listen. But they was living as beggars, Tommy. They was living as beggars spiritually. Uh, and, and, and folks is like that today, we've all. Uh, and it was only because they was ignorant of the wealth that they had uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about uh, a bit, having things accessible, Sister Belinda. Having something and possessing something that man was worth more than all the treasures in the world. And Paul, again, wrote this letter as he, in this book as he did others from prison. And you know why Paul was in prison? I know some of you knows, but you know why, Paul, but there's some that don't know. You know why Apostle Paul was in prison at this time? Bob's shaking his head no. He don't know. He's a young Christian. Bob, Apostle Paul was in prison, put in prison by the leaders of the church. Amen? Yeah. He was put in prison by the leaders of the church. And you know what awful thing that Paul did? I'm going to tell you what preacher Paul done to get thrown in prison by the church. He took a Greek to church with him. Come on. You can look over in Acts chapter 21. You can find it. But the, the religious leaders here had put Paul in prison because he was going around telling everybody, hey, go to church with me. Come to church with me. Man, he had them all there. He had them all there and he stirred the church out. And these folks, listen to me, these folks, these Ephesians, these, church, these people that Ephesus, they, they had it all. And Paul said, you folks is living like beggars. You're living way below your means. You don't even realize what you possess. And Brother Tommy, I believe we do that. I believe I do that as your pastor. I believe when, and, and I really won't know my full potential, what I had in this life till I get to heaven. It's right at our fingertips. What does the word of God say? It said, asking it what? Yeah. Shall be given you. Yeah. Said, seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and what? It shall be open. My goodness gracious. And that's what Paul was saying to this group of Ephesians. He said, man, well, let's read chapter 2 again. Paul looked at him and he said, hey, folks. He didn't look at him. He wrote this letter to the Ephesian folks. And he said, hey, folks, you have the quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sin. Who's that sound like? Sounds like us, don't Marty Erie. Sounds like us. God quickened us. We were dead, and God woke us up. Wherein in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Sounds like us again, don't it? When we were in sin, we just went with the flow. What everybody else done, that's where we went done. What we done, where they went, that's where we went. He said, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and all the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Man, since I started trying to preach in 1985, I love it when the Lord would put verse 4 of chapter 2 on my heart to preach. 
So many times I've stood behind the sacred desk and the title of my message would be, But God. Verse 4, Paul said, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that of not of yourselves it is a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. What was he doing here, Marty? As I said when I first got up here, Paul was speaking to a people that was full of God. Zach, they had everything. They had knowledge and they had everything. But yet they was living as spiritual beggars. And that's what we do sometimes. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. Man, the Jews had these rules and regulations. They had these petitions set up. Just like I said, they, they, they put Paul in prison because he had brought some unbelievers from another faith into the temple there. Man, it upset them. Man, we have got to be and, and, and folks, that's what upset Jesus so much. People thought that they, they were something within themselves. But Paul told the church at Ephesus, he said, man, Jesus came with his blood and he broke down that wall of partition Amen. that had us separated. He said, for he is our peace who hath made both one have broken down the middle wall partition between us, having abolished, abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He reconciled us, Tony. He reconciled us to God. Jesus Christ did with the cross of Calvary. Man alive. He made a bond that was unbreakable. He came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners and fellows, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. <clears throat> there ain't a person in this building, there's not a person viewing by live stream, there's not a person that'll view it a year from now. But the devil ain't made you feel at one time or another that you was nothing spiritual. That you was no child of God. But I said, Paul told these, these Ephesians, he said, Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but you're a fellow citizen with the saints and of the household of God. 
and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation. Mm -mm -mm. What a way to end the chapter. Paul said, you're the temple. You're the temple. He said, I'm in jail because they had so much stock and they had so much trust and they had so much faith in a building that was made with man's hand. But he said, faith, you're living by all you mean because you don't even realize that you are the temple. He said, for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. God's going all over the earth right now. All over the earth. Been that way for many, many, many years since the beginning of time. Looking for temples to dwell in. To dwell in. He ain't looking for a building. I thank God for Rumble Community. Baptist church building. God has blessed us. I'm telling you what, story after story since this church was built many years ago. Bob was talking about uh, the, 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 you know, going after a pallet of water and come back with four pallets just putting forth the effort. Tammy and Peggy and some more of them years ago this church was just no road on it. The first time I, I was here, you've heard me tell, we came here to sing and to carry all of that equipment up 9,000 steps up that hill out there. Man, we was mad. We was mad at our mother for booking us in such a place. Of course, it didn't bother her. Didn't bother her a bit. But man, once we got up on this hill, sweating all, we had church. Praise the Lord. Amen. These folks know. This church had a couple old buildings out, out back. You know what they was. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have no money. Didn't have no money and, and didn't have no resources. They started baking cakes and started gathering. Uh, if, I, we're going to dig that out and get some copies made. I started making cookbooks and selling them. And uh, to put some bathrooms on the back of the church. They weren't fancy bathrooms, but they had the essentials. Had a commode and a wash basin there. I don't know if they still sell it or not. Probably do. Tony would know. Had to buy that cheap pan that was made out of it. looked like cork. It got wet, it broke. It sweated and it cracked. But that's what they had. Look what God's given us now. Amen. Look what God's done, Tammy. Look what God's done through a little bit of effort. Through a little bit of effort. Tammy didn't know that what God was planning on doing, nor did Sister Peggy or any of the rest of them. But they just know they had a mind to work. Had a mind to work. I'd like to take that iron and preach on that. That's scripture. Paul, and, and I appreciate this bill. What a wonderful, it's through the generosity, through the giving, that our bills is paid and we got a we got a facility that we can do anything we want to. Really more room than we need. But God's not interested in it. Folks think they're really accomplishing something because they took, and we're, we don't want y'all to think somebody just got a text. <laughs> I heard that. But that's all right. Hope, hopefully everything's all right. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. But uh, listen. A lot of folks think and we're getting ready to open the doors of membership to the church. If some folks want to take membership, we, we should already done it. They got it done. 
But mom, there's people that are putting all their trust because they got a little certificate that they're a member of the church. You know what? God's pleased. God's pleased. The word of God, he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. It's important to come together in fellowship, in love and unity, and in the word of God. But these big old fancy buildings, you know what? This church, as nice as it is today, he no more concerned. Listen, it don't impress him anymore than it did when he when we had two outside jobs and paneling broke in the bathroom. And steps up the hill. Now we got a paved parking lot, two or three of them, and, and, and a good road up the hill. He was just as happy with the old church as he is with this. But he's looking for vessels. He's looking for temples not made with hands to dwell in. To dwell in. We're rich beyond measure, it's not forget. Let not forget what we possess tonight. I was talking to a brother this week, and I said, people is not going to get where they need to be with God till they get their mind fully made up that God is what they want. Amen! Amen! Amen. I've told numerous ones of them. I could call a man by name that lives within three miles of here. I told him 40, uh, 30 years ago. He was talking to me, and I called him by name and just I called his name just now. I said, John Doe, you'll never get anywhere with God until you're sick and tired of the dead. Amen. He's been wishy-washy. He's been in and out, up and down. You know why? Because he's not fully separated himself from the world. Now, because we're Christians, well, I'm getting a cold wave now. Because we're Christians don't mean that we won't have problems. But I'm telling you what, Tony, I may have failed a lot. I may have come up short a lot. But I'm still on the battlefield, and I'm happy to be there. And it's through the mind of the grace of God. I ain't kept myself. None of us will keep ourselves. None of us will make it or our own power. But it's because.